I'm still, you know, I still weigh 252 point six pounds um, because I'm making these videos back to back so, um, so I promised you a video talking about being a pleasure addict and so this is the video this is it this is um, me bearing my soul you know for better or for worse so um, I found out a couple things in the last last few days that have and I'm going to add to this video which I which is kind of fascinating when it comes to um, food and pleasure. But anyway, um, so what do I mean by pleasure addict? Well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but um, I like to drink, I like to party, I like to eat, I like to have sex, I like to um, do whatever feels good. I don't necessarily feel like I'm a bad person because of it, but I do feel that it's negatively affected my health as you can see, and um, and my well-being. So I always wanted to talk about it a little bit because it's just recently that I realized um, that I am a pleasure addict. I've never, it's one of those things where you don't, you know, a lot of us don't ever take the time to reflect that deeply upon who we are and what we do. And a lot of things that we do are, um, conditioned and deeply conditioned to the point that we don't even question why we do the things that we do. But I've always been a person that's trying to, you know, that wants to grow personally and that um, always questions things and um, and I just, I guess I figured it's about time that I question myself and, you know, I have all of these other things, so many other great things going for me in my life. Um, but you know, I have this, this problem, I have this flaw and you know, everyone has them, but unfortunately my flaw is apparent. Everybody, it's readily apparent. Everyone can see what my issue is and I don't like that and, um, and I want to change that. There's just different levels of pleasure is what, it, what I've basically learned. Um, there's sort of those base level pleasures very animal level pleasures, you know, like that feels good to my skin or that tastes good in my mouth, you know, whatever. Those are really basic pleasures. Um, but there's also a level of pleasure beyond that, which is like the pleasure that you get from say, helping someone out and the pleasure that you get from getting a promotion at work or or for accomplishing a goal or for teaching yourself something new or the pleasure that comes from you know just like you know being out in nature and I mean there's all different levels of pleasure and I have been stuck on that basic animal level of pleasure and you can have too much of that and it can start to negatively affect your life and that's what happened to me I don't know. I don't know why. I really don't know why because I'm not a sad person. I wasn't. I wasn't abused or neglected or nothing happened in my childhood. There's no. There's nothing I'm trying to cover up with food or or alcohol or anything. I just. I like to feel good and I like to have fun, and that's it. That's that. But I have to be a little bit more intelligent and 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 a little bit deeper when it comes to um, my quest for those types of pleasures because um, it may feel good in the moment, it may feel good right right now, but it won't feel good tomorrow when you've gained you know a pound or five or ten or fifty or a hundred eventually. It won't feel good you know, tomorrow when you have a splitting hangover, it won't feel good tomorrow when, you know, you're depressed because you've depleted all your serotonin because you've been partying like a rock star, you know. Um, none of that feels good down the road. Um, so this pleasure that you're having right now is actually just pain in disguise, which is what I've realized. Now, of course, you know, your brain chemistry comes into play. And at that point, you know, you, meaning you're, you know, using willpower or logic or rationality to f try to combat what's going on with your brain chemistry can be 
a Herculean task at some, you know, most of the time. I know that sugar, and like I've talked about before, sugar and flour are things that, um, that light up my pleasure center too much. I can't handle it. And I'm just, you know, it's crack to me, you know? <laughs> so I have to get that out of my diet. And when I first got it out of my diet, it was painful. I mean, it, it, it hurt, not physically. My ear hurts, hurts. Some people it hurts physically. It didn't hurt physically, but it was like a jonesing. Like I was having withdrawals. That, that was hard to, to get out of my diet. Um, but what, you know, once I got off that, over that initial pain of getting that stuff out of my diet, then I was able to um, sort of have this clarity about food. And um, that's the same for all the other vices in my life. When um, I like to drink, I like to drink a lot and I'm a binge drinker, which means, you know, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> But when I drink, I drink a lot. I don't really understand having like a beer. Like, you know, if I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna drink until I at least get a buzz, you know? I'm not gonna be sloppy and falling down. I mean, I'm a professional, but um, I do like to get a buzz on. But, you know, lately, especially as the older I get, um, I find that, you know, I just, I don't want to deal with the hangover. Some people don't get hangovers, and I think that's amazing. I wish I was one of those people, but I'm not. And um, so I've had to really like look at alcohol too and say, you know, this is not doing any. You, this is not doing you any favors. You feel like shit. You 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 know your skin looks awful. You are missing out on things because you have spent a day like recovering from your 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 drinking binge and then on top of that alcohol I realized was a huge massive part of why I've gained so much weight because when I drink I always get a hang I, I when I very first started drinking alcohol many many years many moons ago um, my shoulders used to hurt and I mean they used to ache and I used to get this awful pain and <laughs> I just I wish I had to listen to my body back then, but of course I just pushed through. I got this horrible pain. And I don't know if it's because I have a little bit of American Indian blood in me, and I know certain races don't do well with alcohol, but I don't know what that is, but I didn't listen to my body. And all that to say that I've never really done that well with alcohol. I always get hungover, always. Um, and even if I drink a little bit, if I have more than three drinks, um, I'm gonna get a hangover. Unless it's beer. Sometimes beer, can, I can get away with it. I won't get a hangover, but I still won't feel great the next day. So I'm always having some sort of negative side effect from alcohol. But the biggest neg negative side effect from alcohol is the fact that I want to eat the next day. And I want to soak up the alcohol. And all of you out there know what I'm talking about. And salad will not do, nor will broccoli, nor will a piece of chicken or a piece of fish. I want carbs. I want lots of carbs. I want them now. <laughs> I don't want them covered in cheese if possible. <laughs> so, um, and that's what I, you know, that's what I want. That's what I get. And, and I don't even pretend that I can fight that craving for, um, that type of starchy food after drinking. I, I can't fight it and I don't try to fight it. But if you're drinking every weekend, I mean, well, I should say, even if you are only drinking every weekend, which is what I was doing, basically, like a weekend warrior, like a lot of people in this country, you know, working a job I hate, and then on the weekends, letting loose, you know? Um, if you're doing that, and, you know, you're doing that, you know, sometimes I would drink on Friday and Sunday, or Friday and Saturday, or whatever, um, or do, even if I just drink one of those days, the amount of calories I would take on board during that recovery process was staggering. I mean, just crazy amounts of food that I would eat. And I wasn't eating like, I wasn't like stuffing myself, but my choices were like pizza and hamburgers and french fries and then, you know, I needed dessert and then I needed like a salty snack because I was in bed watching a movie all day because I felt so bad, so I need to have a snack with that, you know. Um, 
So that behavior, that cycle, um, really has played a big part in my weight gain um, and the fact that I'm this large. And so I knew, and I've known for a long time that if I really want to lose weight, I'm going to have to stop drinking. And that's not something that I've ever wanted to do. I don't, I didn't want to stop drinking. I didn't want to give up alcohol. And you know, I've tried like the, just having like vodka and I even make a pomegranate martini, which is sugar free and just with vodka and palm, pomegranate juice. Uh, I actually got it from, I think, Men's Fitness or Men's Health Magazine. So it's, you know, my healthy drink. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I've tried to just stick to, you know, the clear vodkas, I mean, the clear alcohols, the ones that, you know, don't have so many calories and so much sugar or whatever, but I just can't do it. And so I had to finally come to terms with the fact that for a little while, at least, um, I'm not going to drink. And what's funny about that is the, the longer I go without drinking, the less I want to drink. So it's kind of weird like that. Um, it took a while, you know, for the first month, you know, like, you know, 4th of July comes up or, you know, certain things come around where I'm like, oh, I want to drink, but, you know, I think I'm on the other side of it. Now, I still drink. <laughs> I know you think I'm great. Like this, on the 4th of July, in fact, not the 4th of July, but this past weekend, I had a beer. But I just had one. I had it on the empty stomach, so a fairly empty stomach. I had only had a protein shake. So I got like a nice little buzz from it. That was it. You know, I can't. Um, but overall, I just try to stay away from alcohol completely. And I, you know, my idea that, you know, why would you drink one beer and walk away? That doesn't make any sense. I can never do that. I had to stop telling myself that. That's just a lie. I can do that. And if I do do that, then I can have an occasional glass of wine or a beer, which is what I do. But very occasionally, and even... This weekend, I wasn't particularly happy with how I felt after drinking that um, beer, mentally more than physically, but still, I just wasn't that happy. So, it's something that I'm going to lay off. I'm sure down the road, I will have a glass of wine because I love wine. But for now, until I get down to my goal weight, um, I'm just going to really severely limit my alcohol intake. So, um, one, that's another pleasure gone.